Mm. <laughs> so once upon a time, I dated a pimp. <laughs> And we got into, I don't know, this is a serious, this is a real story. Hey, right. yo, this right. is real. This is Let, not yo, a joke. Sis, give it to him. This is not a joke. Listen, sis, <laughs> y'all can get exclusive. relaxed. Y'all can relax. Get, mm -hmm. This is our little country club right here. So we can talk okay. about it all. You are now watching Rhymes and Politics. Spit them balls. Yo, check it out. It's your right hand man, Sice, the host of Rhymes and Politic. And you know when you see these two guys here, you know we in ATL. Got my guy, Joe Sabez. We got sick flow on the side. Mm. We got a double whammy for y'all, man. We got some <laughs> super creatives sitting next to us, man. These queens are doing their thing out here. We got Melanie and we got shells in the building. Y'all clap it up for them, man. You gotta clap it up for the <laughs> sisters right here, yo. How y'all doing? Thank yeah. you, sis. Thank you, Very sis. Well. Super sis. Thank yeah. you. I appreciate y'all for coming down, politicking with us, chopping it up. Um, did y'all do anything for Valentine's Day? Celebrated my birthday. Happy birthday. Yeah. Salute. Yeah. Salute. Happy Salute. birthday. Salute. What you did? You did anything you. special? We went to Rocksteady the day before. So. <laughs> Yo, he was just telling me about that spot. <sighs> I'm in Rocksteady every Thursday and Sunday and almost okay. every day because my lady worked there. Oh, okay, oh. okay. Nice. So what's the vibe in there? The vibe in Rocksteady is crazy. So this is a PSA right here, commercial. <laughs> no, they got different flavors, you know, so some nights... Like Bomba Tuesday is my favorite night. That's, okay, that's what I was saying. Favorite night well, because best, it's so no. live. You know and the it was Afro a two beats. Year anniversary, so yeah. Oh yeah, night. yeah. So you was there for Tuesday? Yeah, I was there Tuesday too. Really? Yeah. Of course, everybody was just yeah. randomly yeah. there on <laughs> Tuesday, and I didn't know. Yeah, is that their best night? Like Tuesday, like to, they... to me. Oh, okay. To me, but Thursday's the R and B night, like tonight. Nice. You know, Friday, Saturday is just kind of like. You know, it's depending. They have different types of vibes. You know what I'm right. saying? But Tuesdays is my favorite. Oh, I'm about to go in there. And the food is good there. too. Oh, so they got a like amazing. a you know restaurant downstairs and upstairs is the yeah. lounge. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. <laughs> yeah, it was amazing. If I went on the night where they were playing like the you know African Caribbean music, mm. and that's my vibe. So yeah. I had fun. The food yeah. was out of this world. That's good. You enjoyed but, yourself. Yeah. That's nice. And then somebody told me like randomly the next day that we were in a section right next to Tank. And oh, I'm yeah. like, so really? nobody said anything while I was there. <laughs> <laughs> Just nobody was like, hey. Yeah. <laughs> Tank Mario and Tyrese was there that night. Come on. And wow. you just said Tank. Come on now. I was in there looking good with my big <laughs> hair and nobody said anything. They saw you. That's a fact, I know. Right? I knew <laughs> somebody was looking at me. I just didn't know who it was. I couldn't see through the hair and the shades. <laughs> I couldn't about, see. What about you, Shells? What you did? I just spent time with family. That's right. Stayed busy. Mm -hmm. On go. Out the way. <laughs> hey, ain't nothing wrong with that. That's always good, too. <laughs> Talk about your craft. Let's, let's start with you. Oh, man. I see. I heard, I saw, I heard Shake Coach. We ain't gonna say twerk coach. We're gonna call it mm -hmm. shake coach. Like gonna shake, like shake. Make it fit, shake. Sound nice. Gotta keep it classy. Shake, yeah. like shake, shake, shake. Shake, shake like this. Shake, He's shake. correct. It is shake like twerk. It just <laughs> sounds better yeah. if you I'm say shake. Right. Yeah. shake coach. You know. But you not only do that. You also like an artist. I can paint. I can sing. I just don't, cause I don't know. Fear of crowds. Really? <laughs> well, fear of certain yeah, crowds. Nice. Well, I'm singing great, but I was also a stripper at one point, right. so that wasn't scary. But singing is for some reason. Yeah. I don't know. What you like to do most? I think paint. That's nice. Yeah, either paint or I also model. So the the nude Afrocentric, like lovey type vibes mm -hmm. with my right. You know, I like that too. How did you even get into that craft? Learning how to paint oh, and stuff like that. Mm. <laughs> mm. So once upon a time, I dated a pimp. <laughs> And we okay. got into, I don't know, this is a serious, this is a real story. Hey, right. yo, this right. is real. This is Let, not yo, a joke. Sis, right. give it to him. This, this is not a joke. Listen, sis, <laughs> y'all can get relaxed. Y'all can relax. Yeah. Get, mm -hmm. This is our little country club right here. So we can talk okay. about it all. All right. So once upon a time, I literally was involved with a pimp. Mm -hmm. And we got to an argument about something. And I was trying to tell him, like, you know, I'm creative. Like, stop treating me like I'm yeah. these girls that you got running and out of the house. And he was like, well, none of that exists if you don't put it out there. And I'm mm. like, fine. So I went to Atlantic City. I, I stopped off at Walmart and bought some canvases and stuff. Mm. And I booked a hotel room for like two or three days. And I literally just sat down. I could draw and I could do makeup. And I just sat down and I did it. And right. I mean, this is this is like eight or nine years later. I made it into a big thing. So mm, nice. it's the weirdest start to a story ever but that is <laughs> that is where it came from did you take any like art classes no 
Really? Mm -mm. Oh, shit. I wish we could like somehow like show like that'd the images. Like, that would be dope, Because right? you know, everybody's like, oh, I can, I can paint. And then you look and you're like, oh, okay. No, we're no, gonna, we're like, gonna, gonna, it's legitimate. You got to send him some images. I promise yeah, it's yeah. legitimate. And at the end of this, we're going to get to social media pages and stuff okay. like that. Yeah. All right. Shelves, talk to us, sis. What you, you do everything. You do uh, websites, you yeah, model. a little bit of everything. So I do graphic design web design, mm -hmm. create logos, flyers, mm -hmm. photography, videography, a little bit of acting. I do a little bit of painting as well. I'm uh, not, you know, up there, but I, I'm decent. <laughs> I, um, I didn't know that. I'm intrigued now. Yeah, see, a little bit of everything. A Zumba <laughs> instructor. Yeah. Um, muse. Okay. You know, that's why I say all around creative. Like, yeah. I don't want to box myself in or put a label on it because, I mean, anything I put my mind to, I'm going to do. So, right, no regardless, That's dope. social media management, mm. you know, branding, marketing, mm. a little bit of everything. So. You also got a podcast, too, right? I do. Talk about that real quick. So, I am a body positive, body confidence advocate. Yeah. And my show is Body Talk with Chills. And I basically just bring people together and we talk all things body. That's dope. Like everything, body. That's dope. I like that. Yeah. Man, I, you gotta have me on the show too, man. Yeah. Say, nah. I, <laughs> Look, when, and, and you said you next to another much. podcaster too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. What's okay, really so, really podcast? Yeah. yeah, we can definitely link. Absolutely, absolutely. Most definitely, I'm so, with it. What you like to do most? Graphic design work, videography, logos, modeling, the podcast. I don't think it's one that I like over the other mm -hmm. um, because I enjoy doing it all. That's okay. why I'm like it's just. I simply create art. So if I'm creating art, I'm happy. I'm in my safe space. So. Did you go to school for all that, like graphic design? I do have a degree in mass communications, um, and I focused on marketing and branding. Yeah. And then I just was really good with computers. I do healthcare IT as well. Nice. So I try to stay in the realm of just <laughs> showing my art, being able to put it out and yeah. help others with their businesses, with their brands, with whatever it is they're trying to do. Mm -hmm. Creative director as well. So, yeah, I wear many hats. That's, yeah, that's beautiful. <laughs> I love that. I love having sisters like that up here on the show to inspire the next generation that's coming up. Are y'all both from Atlanta? No. Where y'all from? Well, I'm a Southern girl. I'm from Tennessee. And migrated to Atlanta. Yes. <laughs> What's the scene out in Tennessee? What's the scene out there? It depends on what area you're in because we have regions, you know. Okay. So there's West Tennessee, Middle Tennessee, East Tennessee. I'm from West <laughs> Tennessee, like Memphis area. Okay. Oh, okay. We're the Mid South. Yeah, this is all Tennessee. Like we categorize everything. Really? So oh, East I Tennessee, know. we're not the same. Yeah. West Tennessee, we're, you know, chill laid back but it's just you know whatever vibe you're looking for right, so if right. you want to go to east tennessee there's the mountains the cabins all that mm -hmm. but i mean okay. west tennessee that's bill street that's you know <laughs> ah, shout them out the thing you know? so, <laughs> yeah it's nice though okay. and then i mean atlanta's pretty much similar because it's the south still so yeah. so what drew you to atlanta um well because i do healthcare it i used to travel a lot with my job mm -hmm. and i was like the airports, like I would always have to drive like an hour, two hours, three hours to get to like a decent airport. So I was like, I'm coming to the hub. I'm mm, coming yeah, to Atlanta like yeah. this. And I can fly anywhere, go anywhere, catch yeah. a flight, any airline. So kind of <laughs> nice. similar reason why I'm moving here. Okay. It's, it's right. the hub. Okay, so you don't live here. <laughs> Not yet, no. Okay. So where you from? <laughs> so it's, it's like a ping pong story. So it's hard to say. So I grew up in Northern Vermont but I was adopted from New Jersey, Wellingboro, New Jersey. Okay. And then after I graduated high school, the day after I moved back to New Jersey and I was there for like 12 years, but right now I live in Philly and in like oh. two months I'll be here. Wow, nah. <laughs> come, come. What part of Philly? I was just in Philly, yeah, like two oh, days ago. Oh God. Did you sage when you left? I'm in, I'm in, I'm in North. I think I don't know. I don't rep Philly, so I don't. I think I'm in North. It's by. I'm not gonna say it on here. No, I'm in South. I'm in South. Everybody. Yeah, South Philly. Okay. I'm in South. Don't want to kick it, robbed, y'all. Sorry, it's South Philly. Everybody. Philly is a whole other ball game. Talk about it. It's a whole other ball game. Talk about it. I, the, the, the label, the city of brotherly love, makes me cackle every time I hear it. So I'm like, are you sure it's love that right. they wanted to? Are you sure it's not hate? 
because whew, that is a whole different jungle. They'll show you the love, that's for sure. That's for sure. <laughs> if you know the right people. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And have enough money. So, so what about Atlanta that drew you down here? There's so many different reasons. Uh, definitely the reason that she gave, it's the hub as a creative. Yeah. I feel like it's much easier to just move yourself to the middle of it than to keep flying in right, and out right. of here constantly yep. trying mm -hmm. to work with people. Um, just everything that I need is right here. You know, the, I have a daughter, so the traditional black schools and stuff, they're here for right. her. I was adopted and oddly, you know, enough raised by a white family. So I didn't grow up with the idea of, you know, it's cool to be from Clark. It's cool to be from Spelman. I didn't grow up with that. So I would like to move her into it. She's so smart. Nice, yes. So I would like her Thank to come you, up sis. in that traditional yes, black life. That's I got right. to see them walk by the other day with the drums. And I'm like, <laughs> we are absolutely moving mm -hmm. here. Like, ain't it, this is ain't where it inspirational? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's beautiful. It's inspiring, right? Yeah. It's so beautiful. So that's, that's a big reason for me. I just... A huge reason for me is the hustle down here is yes, so absolutely. different. Yeah. And you don't have to beg people to hustle. Like, look, exactly. I, I woke up today and fell basically into this situation. You and know what I'm saying? Like, you, said, Yo, you, don't have to, you don't have to be like, come on, y'all. Like, there's shit to, mm -hmm. to do you outside. Got, you, you, know, you don't have to do here. that. That's how New York is. You mm -hmm. got to pull teeth. I love New York. <laughs> New York isn't as bad as <laughs> Philly, though. Philly is very... Yeah. Like I said, Philly's a whole other... I have a lot of family in Philly, so shout out to all my family in Philly. I you have family that I love guys, there, too. Free but... the guys, you already know, because I love you. You know what I'm saying? Salute. Word. That's, yeah, my, that's my sister city, though. Mm. For Philly, Baltimore, yeah. right? Baltimore. Yeah. You know, it ain't no different. They twins. Baltimore and Philly is literally like the same. Yeah. They're... The same mentality. The way it look and all that, too. Yeah. Right? Yeah. What is it? The, the crabs in the barrel? <laughs> But it's different slang though, right? Cause you know, oh, yeah. it's a hey, young bull. Well, yeah. Yeah. You'll hear it if, if I start talking. You'll you'll hear it come out because like I didn't live in Philly for like the whole twelve years. It's only been since October, but they I'm from South Jersey. You pick up the same lingo. So if I get excited, mm -hmm. y'all gonna hear me say John like yeah. a lot. John, yeah. And if I say all, people say it sounds real from that area, and I'm like no. And all my Vermont family is like, you sound weird. What's shaking in Vermont though? What's snow. going on up here? White. <laughs> snow. Uh, between, it literally just snow. Like, between a whole lot of white folks and literal snow. That's, that's... Is it, isn't Vermont's thing live free or die? Or is that, that's New Hampshire? I, I have no idea motto, if that's right? from Vermont. I don't, I don't any, remember what the state motto is. I got out of there. Is there any culture? What, culture? what like, black? Oh. It's like 97% no. white. No. The whole state. Like, when you hear kids be like, oh, I went to a white school. I went to a white state. The whole state. <laughs> they don't listen to hip hop up there? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. It's a little weird. It can tend to be like a little outdated sometimes, unless you're directly plugged on to, into like certain music channels or whatever up gotcha, there. Yeah. But like the radio stations, they don't have a hip hop radio station. Some be like country and, and oh, craziness. Dang. So, like, so wow. you, you could ride with me in the car and throw on just about anything. And yeah. I'll be like, okay, yeah. <laughs> bet you I know the words to this. Yeah, yeah. It's cool, but yeah. it was very interesting. Wow. So what's the Atlanta plan? So you, you have a daughter. How old is your daughter? Four. Four. Mm -hmm. I got to get down here before she goes to the school. Okay, so <laughs> when you come down, are you doing your whole entrepreneur vibe? I mean, I've been doing it for... God, mm -hmm. close to 10 years now. So That's I, all guess I, want. I wanted to get that part out because <laughs> <right there>. <laughs> people <laughs> need to hear that because there's so many people afraid to do what they love. Right. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, and it is. It's so it, it is so challenging and it can be scary. But I, I also want to remind people because I had to discover this on my own. And now that I'm living it, it's real. When you first start doing something, you don't it's not always lucrative. The money isn't always there. The opportunity isn't always there. That honestly starts after year like six, yeah, seven, yeah. eight in yep. the game. Around those years, it becomes routine. You kind of lose your fear. I would have never been on this podcast before. I would have had to be on here drunk just to talk, <laughs> well, you know, but I've well, been around we it do for got so some long. Hookah for you, so. Pretty pity, can you please get the same? <laughs> that is not the same. <laughs> that is not the same. <laughs> Pretty penny, thank you, pretty penny. Thank you, pretty penny. Thank you, pretty penny. Thank, thank you. Thank you, pretty penny. I appreciate yeah. you. Dang, and we left our pieces I got my little piece on my pocket. Then I Just left my piece. Stay ready. You don't have to get it. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Chef, talk, talk to us about your musical influences. What you like listening to? Well, um, I guess 
I don't know if Mel has been like in my head, but um, <laughs> well, you've been in my story. That's probably why. I, I play a whole lot of music in my story. <laughs> but um, yeah. I'm, like I said, I'm from Tennessee, so like it's pretty eclectic, I guess. So it's like you know we got country music, so Nashville that area. Then you got like bill blues. Um, we got <laughs> rap. Like right. so, I listen to pretty much everything. And then do you do the rock music too? To do okay. yeah. all right, all right, all right. Oh, Just yeah, to Apple Beats? oh yeah. yeah, I I'm with it all. And then yeah. I'm a Zumba instructor as well, so we do reggaeton, we mm. do um reggaeton. meringue. That's oh, the proper too. that's the proper <laughs> way, salsa, yeah. I add it all and then I incorporate hip hop in it because nice. you know, my culture. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I enjoy so I listen to everything and then I'm kinda like an old soul, so my mm -hmm. vinyls they go everywhere with me. Nice. Like, I like my needle on the record, <laughs> so yeah. That's right. <laughs> yeah, I listen to everything. So let's touch on the muse. Just break that down for the oh, people yeah. that might not know what that is. What a muse. What a muse is. You inspire artists to create. It's, it's, it's very for the as simple as you can possibly make it. Is you inspire others to create. Um, you know, people do it with music. You know. That's just, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it in further <laughs> depth than that. Give like, us your definition for what it means to you and how you giving okay. it out to the world. Well, it's also my daughter's name. Not, that's oh, what wow. I named my daughter. Oh, that's dope. Yeah. Like As a that. painter. Yes, I did. Mm -hmm. um, for me, I can only hope, I don't have it fully defined, I don't think yet. But for me, I only hope that I can inspire other people the way that the models that have come before me. Right you know, and other creatives. I hate even calling them models sometimes because it's so much deeper than that in mm -hmm. some ways. So I just hope that I can give other people that same inspiration to create. I hope I make people want to pick up a paintbrush and, and paint me the same way yeah. that I want to do that with them. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Rachel Fitt. She was my muse forever. <laughs> <laughs> I loved her. But um, I don't know. I guess that's what it is for me. As simple as it can be. Nah, just... That's dope. I like that. What about you, Chef? So for me, um, my mentor, my sensei, 365 Photography, salute, Brooklyn. Salute, salute, so, the captain. Um, yeah. When I initially met him, I reached out because I was like an amateur rookie photographer, just snapping pictures in auto, not knowing anything about camera settings, mm -hmm. not knowing anything about editing, lighting, anything. But I got on Instagram one day and it's like years ago, I saw his work and I was like, I want to do that. Yeah, so I actually slid in his DM <laughs> and I was like, I, I want to learn this. Like, I want to do this. Right. And I was actually shocked because he responded and was like, pull up, like, come to the studio. Yeah, and I'm looking okay. like, like, what? Like, Move you want me to come now? Yeah. And he's like, yeah. yeah. So next. it's Thank like you. I just um, sort of got more involved, I guess, because like I said, I mostly was just snapping pictures. Like, yeah. I didn't really know the art side right. of it. And then after working with him and, you know, just seeing his work, he actually had reached out to me and was like, I want to shoot the shooter. And so when he said that, I'm like, <laughs> you know, I'm used to being behind the yeah, scenes. Yeah. Like, I ain't never been in front of the camera before. So my very first photo shoot was with him. Mm -hmm. And then after I saw the pictures, you know, seeing like everything that went into it, like the whole process from start to finish, I was like, like this is art, like this right. entire process, yeah. like it's yeah. art yep. and I love it. So then after we just started creating art and so much started coming out of it and it was more than just, like she said, modeling, right. it was more than just snapping pictures, mm -hmm. you know, so that's how I became more so amused. How were how y'all finding y'all creative, like style, y'all look? So, you know, everybody got their own flavor, right? How were y'all finding y'all flavor when y'all creating art or mm -hmm. from music, modeling, painting? Photography. That's a great question. Thank you, sis. That was a great question. <laughs> so for me, it's hard to render me speechless. Um, yeah. My Look, I'm honest. my big thing has always been, um, as we said, like body. Yeah. Body confidence, um, body positivity. So a lot of mine is more so like almost like body liberation because I'm proud of where I where I am now mm -hmm. and where I'm going. And I'm proud of where I've been because right. that's what body positivity is. The whole process of loving yourself in each stage. Because initially when I first um, started Zumba and I got certified, I was like 265 pounds. 
And so to me, like that was the largest I ever been. I was like, I'm unhealthy, like I want to get in shape. And then just seeing the body transform. Right. So I went from like 265 to 175. Mm -hmm. And this is like over a year's time. I'm like, okay, like the body, it constantly changes. And I'm like, yeah. that's art. Like the yeah. body itself is art. Yes. So I was like, okay, I want to show this. Like I'm proud of what I've done. So mm -hmm. you're going to see this. And that's how I mostly do it in the shoot. It's like, it doesn't even have to be body. It can be my hair. Cause I do do a lot with my hair. I right. switch it up and we'll come in here. We don't even have a plan together, no outfit, anything. And it's like, he might say, um, I want to do something with the light and we do it. Yeah. And it's like, wow, like that's, you know, mm -hmm. art. We just created something that quick. Or you can have on a shoe and it's like, you put that shoe on, wow, like, you know, you just turned this simple shoe into a whole, like, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah so. twice, literally. Exactly. Yeah. So. <laughs> just shoes. <laughs> Everything is art. Everything is art. Yeah. Everything could be made into art. Exactly. Like, mm -hmm. Even like your healthcare IT thing. It's like, if you really like it and you putting the pieces together and then you can figure out how to manipulate something, mm -hmm. to me that's art. Yeah. And working mm -hmm. with the different systems and mm -hmm. working with different hospitals and like everything is different and then, you know, um, with EHR systems, um, EMR systems, there's like 10 ways to do everything. So it's like you might do one way and say, okay, this is easy for me and I might can show you five other ways to do it and they're like, okay, well that made it a little quicker, you know, mm -hmm. and so, so learning that too is like you said, all right, like I love just the process of it and being able to grow and continue because it's never going to be the same. Facts. And I only use that example just to show how art can range from you doing hair, shoes, yep. making a movie, making a song, mm -hmm. even to your actual profession. If you treat right. it as art, mm -hmm. you'll, you'll do a lot better. Never be a job. <laughs> Facts. I recently so how does it work is my question when you have so many gifts and talents. How do you choose to mm. use whichever one you're going to use? Right. Or, or is it just a flow? It chooses you. Was, it chooses exactly. you, she yeah. said. It exactly. chooses you. Just kinda, <laughs> <laughs> you just kind of, um, and that's kind of what my answer is, the same question. Is it, uh, I didn't really choose it. It just kind of chose yeah. me. I've always been into body stuff, and you guys are going to laugh. But if you've seen, oh, my God, is it is it super bad where he's drawing the so when I was like real young I used to draw a whole lot of naked people uh -huh. like I have books saved from when I was young drawing naked people I don't know why I think maybe I was fascinated with it um because my parents were kind of strict so I wasn't really allowed to mm -hmm. you know delve into that um and then I don't know I just somehow transferred into drawing huge paintings of genitalia i don't know and somewhere you just kind of it just kind of transferred and same with the um same with the modeling it was just always it kind of meshed in together but for me it was body positivity but in a different way more so my own struggle because like i said before i did grow up in vermont and i was black Mm -hmm. I literally did not know I was attractive until I was probably like 16, 18 years old. Really? Because I just didn't know they didn't have stuff to support my figure or yeah. my skin tone right, or my right. hair. They exactly. didn't have it. And, and I had one hellish moment where I literally had a white male put it on his bucket list that he wanted to sleep with a black girl before he graduated. Yeah, and that, that, was, that was my boyfriend at one point. Mm -hmm. so, and that, so stuff like that really, I think... I'm still discovering, you know, what, what, I guess, what I deserve, what I don't deserve, right. what my beauty is mm -hmm. because of that, because mm -hmm. I just had this period of time where I didn't even understand my beauty. Not that I thought I was ugly, but my beauty specifically was not celebrated in that area. So now that I know, you know, and I'm more proud of what I have, I, of course, like what she said, I want to show it. This is what I did. Yeah, this yeah. is what I have. And now I want to show it. So, and, so how old you know. was you when you came into your own and you, found, and you figured out like, nah, I'm the bomb out here. Like, I'm that bitch. I'm, I'm sorry. I don't mean to say it like that. No, it's fine. No, it's fine. <laughs> it's, I'm like, it's, it's, it's no I'm offense taken. I'll, I'll bleep it out and add it. Don't worry. No offense taken. Um, this is crazy. Probably once again when I was dating the pimp. And because what, what, how did you even go down? I was, then a, I I was a stripper. How you even met this I was thing. a stripper. Right. I was a stripper. Gotcha, and gotcha. obviously, you know, wow. he would, they, they'll come through and try to scoop up women that they feel right. like. But yeah. he just didn't understand, like, I might be out here and, and a little lost in the area, but I'm not, I, I do not need help selling, you yeah. know. I, no, thank you. He didn't understand that. So we ended up as more so like homies. Right. But um, 
Oh, I don't know. I'm trying to figure out where I went with this. The, um, the, so sorry. How old were you when thank you, you came into your own? Thank you, you found, thank you, thank you. figured out thank you. this beautiful queen out here that's moving upon this he earth. basically taught me that the way I was raised to think is, is not necessarily correct. Mm -hmm. That I can live differently. That I didn't have to, you know, grow up and, and be exactly like my parents who were teachers and very straight laced and married each other at like 18 years old. He told me the world is a big place and you're not bad if you live differently. Right. And then I slowly kind of started to think differently and look at things differently and embrace, you know, just embrace everything more. And I think that was when it started, you know, Gosh, started more. Wow, that's Man. Cool. I don't think I ever wanted to say shout out to the pimps, but <laughs> but 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 what I've been learning watching movies and everything right. is like the pimps are always the wise ones. Yeah, it's yeah, weird, yeah. but they are. It's like they got so much wisdom. It's and the just girls the profession. Young though, too, though. The, 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 the profession is just yeah. crazy. no. It is. It is. It is. And they kind of groom them a Young little bit Young and impressionable. Too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pimping and pimping Ken. Pimping pimping has two books. Recommend it to everybody. Iceberg Slim is a must read, of course. Too. Okay. But the knowledge is, it goes way beyond just pimping and it, it's a world view. Right. And you kind of have to have an open mind to, to understand it, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. But it's phenomenal, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah, no, On I the don't... subject of books, the, have you guys ever heard of the book, uh, The Four Agreements? Of course. Anybody? No. Life-changing read, like immediately life-changing as soon as you read it. And it's so weird because I read the four agreements and I immediately hit him up and I'm like, have you read this? Because like half of the things that you told me are in this book. Wow. And he was like, no, I never have. I said, get out of here. Wow. So for real, if you, I think if you are intelligent enough to really receive some of their messages mm -hmm. and you have value beyond just go out there and make me that money, yeah. oh, they'll mm -hmm. give you the game. They'll teach you. You know, you just got to be receptive mm -hmm. enough and bright enough to soak it in. Right. Nah, yeah. I was cool. making my notes right so now. Shut <laughs> the four agreements. Yeah, oh, trust me. Oh, okay. have you seen um, okay, Dave Chappelle's The Dreamer? Okay. Because of that, have you seen it, The Dreamer, yet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you notice the end of it was like just him talking about the four agreements? Like you know when he's talking I, I about. Did, I didn't put that together. Yeah, watch it again. That now. was the most recent one that just dropped. Yes. In December. Yeah. That's like the, the very end of it is just all talking about like the dreamer and how sometimes you're in another yeah, person's yeah, dream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. No, just, yeah, he put it in right, comedy right. form, and I'm like, yeah, 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 genius. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's on Netflix right now. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm watching. He got that he right. got a message. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm watching that tonight. He got a message to people that wouldn't normally get that message, mm -hmm. and I'm like, yes, Maybe. absolutely. What's a good uh, relationship to you guys? Oh God! <laughs> bang, bang, bang. My, uh, for me, God, I, I, God only knows. I don't know. Okay, but my parents, my parents, That's good. have only been together. Oh my God! I don't even know anymore. I don't. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like they've passed their fiftieth. I don't uh, forever. Do you think that can happen in this generation? Or yes. That, that's they only like the. Yes, uh, but you have to literally find your soulmate. And you really got to search for that. Mm. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. it's said that people have more than one soulmate. Mm -hmm. So it's how would a person soulmate. navigate? <laughs> you know, how do you navigate if you got more than one soulmate? Mm. I'm not think, saying that I would want I to, think, you know. I think I know I have more than one, to be honest, because you change, you grow. You change and you grow. You have your soulmate at one point could be your best friend. At some point, it could be, right. you know, your lover. At some point, it could literally be your child. You're supposed to be bonded with mm -hmm. like that, you know. And I think you grow and you change and you just like okay. So I have pocket stones, like pocket crystals, right? And I lost them. And I was telling my girlfriend that I lost them, and she took me to the store to go get new ones for my birthday. And she said, "You're probably supposed to lose them. You are mm. probably supposed to pick up a new energy now." Mm. Pick, get, pick out the different stones that bring to you a different energy now, and that's right. what you're supposed to have. Yeah. And I feel like that's, that's probably the same lost. way with love. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. I like that's, how you broke that down. That's that's right. <laughs> Shells, what's a good relationship to you, or what you look for in a, a good relationship? Hmm. Well, I mean, I would initially say my parents as well, yeah. um, <coughs> but only because um, my parents, they've known each other their entire lives. Like literally from the cradle, mm -hmm. my um, oh. grandparents are friends. So my parents went to school like elementary all the way up yeah. together. And then they had us and they're still together. And it's like I would see them, you know, 
going through things and how they work through them. And, mm -hmm. you know, of course, I felt like I was kind of sheltered growing up. Like they kept a lot of stuff from yeah. us, but yeah. it was more yes, so, you know, you, for our good. But then it's like just seeing how they handle certain things. And with me having a child now, too, it makes me want to sort of <clears throat> switch up how I do certain things. Right. Like even even not even doing it just like them, but then just, you know, yeah. coming just into my own little and taking little pieces. Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so um, I would say that they are ideal for me. Um, and then what I look for is like communication. Um, huh. And I feel like everybody has their person. Like, yeah, you may have multiple soulmates, but I feel like when you find your person, you'll grow with them. You yeah. all will grow together. And then not saying that you all have to do the same things or, you know, be into the same things because my parents are complete opposites. Mm -hmm. um, my mom, she's sort of like one of those stay at home, homebody yeah. people. Yeah. Um, but then my dad, he's social out. Like yeah. he's, you know, he's exactly a party dad. guy. And then my dad, he's a drinker, like casually mm -hmm. drinker. Mm -hmm. My mom doesn't drink really at all. She yeah. may drink a glass of wine and, you know, but he says my mom is what keeps him level, what right, keeps him right. balanced. Yeah. And I'm like, that's what you need in a relationship yes. too. You need balance. Yes. So, you mm -hmm. know, that's what I look for. Balance, <laughs> communication. And I feel like that, that <laughs> goes back to yeah. your question of is that possible today? Right. Oh man, I think egos are so big on Social both sides. Social media, yo. Social, Social media, media. yeah. Pride. Egos and pride. Egos yeah. are so big. Um, pride. It's also big on um, men and women's side. Yeah, I, I beg y'all not to do the to do the man versus women. Please, <laughs> no, God, no, don't no, make no. me Brent do too. that on here. Please <laughs> don't. But I think both sides. The egos are so big that that even humbling yourself enough to admit you may need that person to right, balance right. you out is so hard to like find that. nowadays. Yeah. It's yeah. so hard to find. And communication is so hard to find. Yeah. True so communication, like clear communication. Healthy communication. Mm -hmm. It's healthy very, very hard. So, but at the end of the day, I decided the other day that I'm more of like an Eartha kit. I don't really care. <laughs> I don't really care anymore if right. I get married. That's I like to create and I might have a thousand beautiful love stories. I don't know. But yeah. that's when you're in that space. That's when that person comes. When I you're know. in that space don't where you're like, I'm having I don't fun care no. blowing by myself. <laughs> Little, I don't want to. But, but, but the away. message that's being Stay pushed away. right now yeah. is yeah. you don't need nobody. Uh -huh. yeah, so yeah, we're so imbalanced right now in life, especially this generation, because mm -hmm. they all like, I don't need no man, yeah. and I don't need no this, and I don't need no that. And then people just go through life tormented because mm -hmm. naturally, most of us were built to have somebody. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I'll never, I'm not saying that much. I'm, I'm not that much of a, <laughs> not like that. You know, I'm just saying I'll be happy either way. I'm happy either way. I, I'm not a, I don't need this. I don't need that. You know what I'm saying? I have met, you know, partners where I felt like, dang, I might actually need you to get to the next step mm -hmm. into the next level. I hope he never hears this podcast. <laughs> oh. I just said that on this, this podcast. Because it's on only YouTube. one person. No He's going to be at home yeah. fluffing his beard. <laughs> 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 fluffing his beard like, yeah, she talked about me on the yeah. podcast. But I have met partners where I felt like I might actually need you, but we're not together and I'm fine. You know, mm. I don't ever want to be that negative one. that's like, I don't need no man because right. I might find a man that I need or a female that I need, you know, but mm -hmm. I do feel like that's so toxic. The, how disposable everybody has become. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Well, some things that can break a relationship. I know finances can be one of the top ones. Cheating. I was gonna say, yeah, mm. I, I, I'll go with cheating. that. The cheating, cheating is my cheating. number one to, killer. But you know, a lot of times cheating comes when somebody don't know who they are, uh -huh. mm -hmm. and they still searching. Yep. Mm -hmm. So they looking for things. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like I, you know, I've yeah. been a person that I, I did that before, yeah. but oh, then afterward. I'm like, dang, I did that to that person. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I love like, hearing that because you do, as a woman, always wonder, like, do they ever fucking oh, care what they do to us? Mm -hmm. Like, ever? So it is nice to hear now, you know, a grown after, man say yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Even, even, even after now being in something better for me, I still look back and I'm still hurt like, dang, I did that. Right. Okay. You know.